Guys, today's video is all about guitars, and I'm going to tell you how many guitars you should own. I'm totally kidding about that, but what I am going to do is I'm going to go through the guitars that I currently own, and I'm going to share with you why I own each guitar and the purpose that each of these guitars serve. Now, you'll also hear some clips, and some of those are going to be live clips, by the way, so that's going to be pretty cool, but make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video. I've actually got some exciting news for me and for you as well, so hang around for that. Alright, so first up we've got my Ibanez Prestige RG1570. Now I love this guitar, I've had it since 2009, I'll never get rid of it, and actually there's a short backstory that I'll share with you in a few seconds here. But let's go over the high level specs and I'll share my primary uses for this guitar here. So we've got a base wood body, and then we've got a rosewood fingerboard here. And I think this model, the RG1570, I believe they started making these in 2003 and then continued on to 2004. I don't know if this is 03 or 04 model. And if I'm wrong about any of this stuff, guys, please feel free to correct me in the comments. Uh, in fact, that goes for any of the guitars that I'm about to go over here. Sometimes I read things and I forget them later. But the thing I like most about this guitar, actually there are two highlights to this, is first of all, the wizard neck. Actually, this is a super wizard neck. I wonder if super wizards would win in a real battle against like regular wizards. The super wizard necks are very thin. You can see here how thin this is, okay? And the actual fingerboard itself is wide, which this is either going to fit your hand really well or it's not going to fit it well at all. This is really just a personal preference. It just happens to fit my hand quite well and that's why I like it so much. The other thing I like about this guitar are the pickups. Now these are Ibanez stock pickups and this is the V8, S1, and V7. Funny thing is, I didn't like these pickups when I first got the guitar. It just took me a long time to get used to this guitar for some reason and I actually switched these out. You guys probably remember about a year or so ago, I had these pickups changed out for the DiMarzio Tone Zone Air Norton and just another DiMarzio single coil pickup to replace the S1 here. I got it back and I was like, uh, I'm not sure if I like these. I want my stock pickups back. So I took it back to the shop. This is Replay Guitar Exchange in Tampa. And I had them switch out the pickups. They're like, didn't you just change these out? <laughs> yeah, don't like them. So we're going back to this. And a quick story, you might ask, well, why did you why did you change it to DiMarzio? Well, a good friend of mine, Tom, which we're about to get into Tom and this guitar here in a second, uh, he had sent me the Air Norton, or the, I think it was a Tone Zone. I can't remember which one. So I just got the other ones that kind of went with that one. Uh, anyway, I've got all that in another video here and why I switched back to the stock pickups. There's another video. I'll put it up there if you want to go catch that later. Oh, and real quick, this guitar has the Ibanez Edge Pro Tremolo system here, uh, which is pretty cool. To be honest with you guys, I, I can't really tell the difference between this one and the Floyd. I mean, I, and I don't do any crazy dive bombs and a lot of whammy stuff. I use the whammy bar very subtly, which I don't even have it on right now. So anyway, uh, I guess it's a great tremolo setup. Again, I can't really tell the difference between this one and the Floyds or, or any other type of tremolo. What I love about this guitar is the diversity of tones and sounds that I can get out of it. So a lot of times when I'm playing metal with the guitar, well, pretty much all the time when I'm playing metal, of course I'm using that V8 pickup, okay? I'm using the bridge pickup there. Uh, you just get a nice, almost fat sound out of that, if that makes sense. It's just got a lot of, uh, it's just got a lot of low end punch in there. So it's really good for rock and for metal. Now, when I'm playing cleans, I like to use a combination of the V8 and S1 here, right, in that position there. And I also really love the clean tone I get from using a combination of the V7 and S1 here. 
So that gives me a really nice clean tone. Now for leads, or I'll say most of my leads, I'll just use that V7 humbucker there, that neck pickup, and that just sounds cool. On that note, no pun intended, this guitar sounds awesome for multiple styles of music, not just metal. So I actually use this in a lot of my live gigs, you know, of course to play some, some distorted solos, but also to play a lot of clean stuff too, because my live gigs are kind of like acoustic. They're just solo gigs, they're mostly acoustic, but I'll take this guitar, just to spice up the gigs a little bit. And it's just got some beautiful sounds like all the way around. This has a lot of sentimental value to me because one of my closest friends in the whole world, Tom Sherman, he practically gave me this guitar at a time when I didn't own an electric guitar. Again, this is back in 2009. I had just met my current wife the year prior to that, but uh, before her and I connected, I kind of went through a rough time. I, I won't even go down that road, but uh, I didn't really have a whole lot of music gear. I just had an acoustic at that time. so. You know, he knew I was starting to get serious uh, back into recording music and writing music, so he sent this to me for almost nothing. And he just had one stipulation. He's like, dude, you know, if you ever want to get rid of it, let's just keep it in the family. Sorry, Tom, we're keeping the family, but it's staying in my studio. Next up, we've got the ESP LTD M1000 Deluxe. Now, I got this guitar um, not quite a year after I got the Ibanez that we just talked about. When I got this guitar, I bought it pre-owned. I can't remember how much I paid, but it was like half the price of a new one. But when I got this, when I put it in my hands for the first time, I'm like, wow, this was exactly what I was looking for at that time. So. This thing has an alder body, uh, it's got the maple neck, has an ebony fingerboard. I attribute the fastness, you know, this is like one of those really effortless and what they call a fast neck. I kind of attribute that, I guess, to the ebony fretboard. I mean, my fingers just fly a lot faster and effortlessly on this guitar, really compared to like my Ibanez, which you've got the rosewood there. So I, I, I attribute that again to the type of fingerboard here. Now you've got the Floyd Rose set up here as you would expect and the cool thing about this guitar is we've got the EMG 81s. They pack a powerful punch as most of you know. Now I also, a cool fact about this guitar, I recorded my very first album with this guitar. This is back in uh, where I released the album in 2013 called Apocalyptic Dreams. So if you look up my name, Jason Stallworth, then type in Apocalyptic Dreams on you know iTunes, Spotify, whatever source you listen to music on, it's out there. So definitely check that out. And a lot of you have listened to that and supported that album. And thank you, by the way. Uh, hey, check out all my music while you're out there. But Apocalyptic Dreams, if you haven't heard it, definitely, definitely listen to that. And I appreciate that. But what I love about this guitar uh, and what like really was so enticing when I first picked it up was the fingerboard, the ebony fingerboard. And also, I didn't mention this, this guitar has true jumbo frets. I don't know if you see those that close. Uh, a lot of guitars say they have jumbo frets, but then when I play them, it's like, okay, they're larger frets, but they're not really jumbo frets. This guitar, these frets are pretty monstrous. So that along with the ebony fingerboard, I think is, are the things that make this guitar so effortless to play. So I really, really love shredding on this guitar. It's the perfect shred machine. And I also like the EMG 81 pickups. These things, again, they just pack a powerful punch. I mean, when you're playing those metal rhythms, if you wanna chug on this thing, or if you wanna play some speed metal or whatever, it doesn't matter. Man, they just, they have a lot of clarity to them. And again, they're just very, very powerful. So yeah, that is the LTD M1000 Deluxe. Now. 
next up we have got my Takamini G-Series acoustic guitar. Now this guitar here, <laughs> it gets a lot of use these days. You guys know that I play a lot of live gigs, live solo gigs around town in the Tampa area and surrounding areas start to really expand out. It's something that I never really envisioned myself doing and I don't want to get off topic but I just say that to say that this guitar gets used, played live like twice, sometimes three times, sometimes four times a week, just depending on my live show schedule. Uh, but yeah, this is the G-Series. Now, I apologize for this, guys. I do not know the exact model of this thing. Um, my good friend of mine gave me this whole cover here, Brian from the Southern Creek Band, uh, which I've got, he's gonna be a mention in this video later. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about later at the end. Uh, but anyway, I don't wanna remove this thing because it's really hard to get back on, so. And honestly, guys, I don't, I know this sounds bad, but I don't really pay too much attention to the models. I remember when I got my seven string guitar, which that's coming up by the way too. It has a long name, ESP E2 Horizon FR7, and for the life of me, I just couldn't remember it. And it's just like, okay, whatever. I either like how it plays and sounds or I don't. And that could mean it's a $2,000 guitar or a $300 guitar. It doesn't really matter to me if I like it, I like it. But in any case, this is a G-Series acoustic. It is the, uh, the solid spruce top here. Now, this is a jumbo acoustic. You can see how big this thing is here. Forgive the reflection there. But it's a jumbo acoustic, so it's, it's kind of a monster on stage. But I've gotten so used to playing live with it, it's really just not a big deal. When I, when I first started playing live with it, it's like, man, this thing's huge. Maybe I should just get like a regular size acoustic. But uh, it's really not that bad. You get used to it after a while. So we've got a mahogany body here. And I believe the fingerboard is called Ovencall. Ovencall, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> I guess I can't ask you guys to pronounce it correctly in the comments because you're just going to type it, right? <laughs> but hopefully I said that right. In all reality, guys, I don't know a lot about acoustic guitars. I don't know a lot about the wood and how they're made and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, being a metal guitar player primarily throughout you know my entire life since 1989. Uh, not that I haven't played acoustic. I mean, I started on acoustic, but I've just never dug that deep into them. I guess I should dig a little bit deeper now that I'm playing acoustic so much. Uh, the other thing is, it's got the Takamini electronics here, so you know that makes it just easier to get good sound going directly to the board. Uh, actually, I use a wireless. You guys know I use the Boss wireless system. I think it's called the WL20L. So what I like most about this guitar is kind of funny. You know, there's not really one particular thing. It does play really well, and the action is set pretty low on it too. Um, I do use light strings on this, the acoustic light strings, the Elixirs, uh, the Nano Webs, I believe. I think that's 12 through 53 if I'm not mistaken. There's not anything in particular that like just hits me with this guitar. It's just the fact that it's solid and it allows me to be consistent on stage. I mean, by itself out here in the room, you know, it, it sounds good, but you know, it's not like playing a Taylor or a Martin or something like that. Let's play something real quick here. So it's not like an over the top, again it sounds good, but it's not like this over the top, oh my god, that's the most awesome acoustic I've ever heard in my life. Uh, but again, it's just a very solid and consistent guitar, and I guess that's what I'm looking for, especially on stage when you're out playing live, you know, week after week, sometimes multiple gigs back to back. You know, I want something that's just going to be there, and I never have to worry about it, it's always going to be the same every time. Next up, and you guys might not expect to see this in the guitar collection, but hey, bass is a guitar as well. And I'll be honest, I like to lay my own bass tracks. I love playing bass. I, I enjoy the process of writing my own bass tracks and recording them. I've played bass on my own albums. Right now I've got four albums out. 
I'm working on the fifth album to be released in 2022. I know I've been behind on that for quite some time. That's another story, but I've just been real busy. Anyway, not to get off track again, because I'm good at doing that. This is the ESP LTD D5 bass. It's a five string bass. Now, a lot of you have seen some of my bass guitar videos and you know how I feel about five string basses. I love them a lot, they're awesome. The thing about five string basses, and then we'll get to the specs here, if you're recording with just a six string guitar, or playing, and playing in a band, whatever, just six string guitar in standard tuning, well, you've got those lower notes, you've got that lower range with that B string on here to fill in some of those bottom end parts. And it just, man, it, it makes the whole vibe just heavier if that makes sense. And of course, if you've got a seven string guitar like I do, well, you've got your B string right here. Everything is in sync. And no, I didn't mean to band in sync. So we've got the mahogany body here and what a beautiful and cool finish that is. This is really awesome. And we've got the maple neck. Now, this is also neck through construction here. Pretty cool there. A lot of sustain on this bass. This thing is pretty powerful. And we've got the rosewood fingerboard here. Now, this guitar, uh, the LTD D5, has ESP designed pickups. They are active pickups, and you've got a lot of tonal controls on here, which brings me to what I like and maybe what I don't care for so much. So I'll say what I don't care for, and this is not a bad thing. This is a really good thing to have for most people is there's just too many knobs on here. I like a volume knob and then maybe a bass treble, but I never really use any of that. Uh, you can get some or a lot of tonal variations from all of these knobs here. So again, it's a godsend to most bass players. I just, sometimes I'll create a setting on here and then I might bump a knob or something like that and I'm like, crap where did I have that at you know look you guys know I say it in a lot of videos I'm like Leonard Skinner I'm a simple man uh, anyway so what I love about this bass is again the fact that it's a five string it plays really well it sounds awesome and I actually have been using just a plug-in a bass amp plug-in for my bass tone uh, the particular plugin I've been using is by Studio Devil. I believe it's called uh, uh, Bass Amp Pro or something like that. But if you just Google Studio Devil and look up their Bass Amp, uh, and I've played a lot of plugins, and I'm not, I don't mean to harp on plugins and tone and all that stuff. Of course, I'd rather have this through a bass amp, but just in the studio here, this plugin sounds amazing with this bass. So I have used this bass on every album except for my first album. I think I had a Dean bass for my very first album, but I used this on both Heavy Metal Workout and Heavy Metal Workout 2, and also on the Masterpiece album. <laughs> Next up, we have got the Schroeder Marksman 87. Now, this has to be the coolest looking guitar that I own right now. Look at that finish. It is absolutely beautiful. And the coolest part about the finish is I got to choose it. We'll talk more about that in a second, but let's quickly go over the specs. This has an interesting story behind it as well. So this has a mahogany body and we've got a maple neck, and as you can see, it is a neck through. That separation is just the, just the paint there, but it is a neck through construction here. And then we've got the rosewood fingerboard. Uh, now this guitar also does have jumbo frets. They're not as jumbo as my LTD, uh, but they're still, you know, they're still considered jumbo frets here. It also has a Schaller, and I hope I pronounced that right. This is a German brand, the Schaller Tremolo, the floating Tremolo here. And these pickups are by the same company as well. Now, another cool fact about this guitar is all of the hardware, the parts, uh, even down to the tuners you see here, all these are by either German or European companies. Mike Schroeder, who is the owner of Schroeder Guitars, 
he made sure that you know he got most everything from Germany just trying to keep everything as local as possible which I think is great when you're an independent business like him so about Mike's and the story behind this guitar real quick here uh, so Mike Schroeder again he's he's a German independent guitar maker he's based out of Hamburg Germany every time I hear Hamburg I think Mm, I'd love a hamburger right now. Actually, I'd really love to go to Germany. I've never been, so I really hope to go there someday. And my dream, I know we're getting off track once again, which is I'm great at. One of my dreams, guys, is I would love to play at the Wacken Open Air Festival. Even if I just play on the smallest stage, I don't care. Just to say, hey, I played this venue, that'd be so awesome. All right, so Mike, he has been a longtime subscriber of my channel, and he just reached out to me one day and said, dude, I love your channel, I love what you're doing. I'd like to make a guitar for you. Just fill out this form. So I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that caught me off guard. I'm like, somebody wants to make a guitar for me. So I was really blown away, very humbled by that. So Mike, uh, thank you once again for this beautiful guitar. I am gonna be doing a full demo and review of the guitar on my channel here soon, and I'll have a blog post to go with that. Uh, so that's gonna be coming up in the next month or so. But the thing I love about this guitar the most is it's just a solid guitar for one. Actually, it's light, like it's very lightweight. Uh, but as far as the playability goes, it's very solid. The pickups, the, these specific pickups, they're not super hot. And you're probably thinking, well, Jason, metal, I want a hot pickup, man. They're passive pickups as well. But one good thing about these pickups they really keep you honest in your playing and I sort of like that I didn't really like it at first I'm like I like the way they sound they sound awesome uh, but it really just keeps you honest in your playing there's really no getting away with you know those little subtle screw-ups that we all make from time to time which hey I make plenty of them trust me uh, but it really keeps you honest. Um, the playability of the guitar is just is fantastic. I mean, and it also, like I was talking about the Super Wizard neck earlier by Ibanez. I want to just point out the neck real quick. This neck is a bit thicker. With that said, though, the fingerboard is slightly thinner. It's not as thin as a lot of guitars that have a thicker neck like that, but it's, I don't know, this just fits my hands really well. So I, I was kind of concerned about that at first. And I'm always concerned about that when getting a new guitar. There are certain guitars that my hands just don't, they just don't seem to fit very well, right? And you guys know what I'm talking about. This one, it fits me almost just as well as my Ibanez, you know? Again, I do prefer that, that wizard neck, but somehow this thing just fits really, really well. Now, I use this guitar mainly for 80s metal or 80s rock, which is really what it's built for. Uh, actually, you guys see Gunner playing this guitar on a lot of the videos, especially my lesson videos. So this has become really kind of the main guitar I've been using in the studio for a lot of my lesson videos. Really awesome guitar though. Uh, you can custom make your own Schroeder guitar, by the way. You can choose the pickups, you can choose the finish, all that stuff. Uh, this is the Schroeder Marksman 87. You'll see that on Mike's website there. Again, that link will be in the description of this video, along with some other links that I'm gonna have for you as well. ultimate metal beast of a guitar, the ESP E2 Horizon FR7. And this is actually my first seven string guitar that I've owned. I have had this, um, to date, I've had this for about four years now. And I actually recorded my album Masterpiece with this guitar. All those tracks were recorded uh, with this guitar here. That was my first seven string album as well. It was also the first album that I had some death metal vocals on there too. I was just trying something a little different and I started, you know, singing that style, integrating it with just my normal singing voice and I'm like, okay, you know, maybe I'm onto something here. Uh, you guys seem to respond very well to that, so thank you for all the support on that album. Uh, I have a link to that album, by the way, or you can just look up my name, Jason Stallworth. 
uh, on any of your listening sources and just type in masterpiece. One word, peace is spelled P-E-A-C-E, okay? Like mastering the art of peace, which is really what the album's all about. So, uh, got sidetracked again. <laughs> so, this guitar here, um, we've got the mahogany body, uh, we've got a maple neck, and as you can see, this is neck through construction. A lot of sustain in this guitar. It is a bit heavy. <laughs> it's like my grandfather once made a joke. He picked up one of my guitars like, is this what you call heavy metal? <laughs> now you guys know where I get my puns from. I think I told this story on a prior video as well. Now we've got the ebony fingerboard here and like the LTD M1000 Deluxe I shared with you earlier, this neck is just super fast. Now let's talk about frets real quick. So these are listed as jumbo frets as well. Uh, but they must not be the jumbo jumbo frets and I'm not complaining about them I actually like these frets a lot, but they're not as large as the frets I have on my LTD M1000 Deluxe and I kind of wish they did have them I mean these are perfectly fine But hey if they had a little bit bigger frets, it would just be like okay Yeah, this is like the god of guitars here now. We've got the EMG pickups These are the EMG 707s and one of the reasons why I went with this particular guitar is this was a guitar with 707s uh, I was already familiar with ESP having the LTD guitars and I, I like that guitar uh, But the EMG 707s at one point in time I don't know if he still uses them or not but Jeff Loomis he used these pickups and I think this is when he was with the band Nevermore but of course I, I like Jeff Loomis so I'm like well if Jeff Loomis likes it I'm gonna like it too and I do these these pickups you know they pack a punch got a lot of clarity to them and just really awesome pickups now we also have the Floyd Rose I don't have my whammy bar in right now but we got the Floyd Rose uh, tremolo set up here and we also have the Goto locking tuners and I've been asked this question before, it's like, well, if you've got the Floyd Rose, if you got that, why do you need locking tuners? Let me tell you, man, locking tuners, it just makes the string changing process so much faster. Like, it literally cuts that in half. So, uh, I'm almost wanting to put locking tuners on every one of my guitars. I forgot to show you my acoustic, that has locking tuners as well. And again, I'm, I'm really considering putting those on all of my guitars. It just makes string changing easier. And it does help the tuning stability as well, even with the tremolo setup. It's just kind of like a double whammy, no pun intended. So what my primary use for this guitar is, well, it's of course for metal. I mean, it's, you know, it's a metal machine. Not that you couldn't play other styles with it. I'm sure you could. I know there are other styles like jazz and even some country that use seven string guitars. And I think I mentioned that on my why I almost quit playing my seven string a few videos back. That video is pretty cool if you haven't seen that, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I, I actually struggled with this, just to bring that up real quick. I actually struggled with a seven for, well, up until recently. I had actually put it away for a while, put it in this case. I'm like, I'm just gonna sell it. I had it up for sale. I'm really glad I didn't sell it though. I would have been very disappointed. I know a lot of you told me that. It's like, don't sell it, dude. You're gonna regret it later. So fortunately it didn't sell. I held onto it, but I pulled it out of the case of probably two or three weeks ago and just had this newfound love for it. Uh, so I'm actually gonna be going back on the album that I've already recorded with my Ibanez on six string. There are a few songs that I had originally recorded with the seven string. I know it gets kind of messy here, guys. I'll explain all this in a different video, I promise. But anyway, I'm gonna go back and re-record a couple of those songs with the seven string. Uh, just to get those lower those lower ends that I want on those particular songs. So stay tuned for that.
guys, last guitar, and then hang around. I've got some really cool news that I want to share with you. I'll make that part quick because I know this video is getting lengthy. Uh, but remember, I said I have one honorable mention, and this is an American Fender Telecaster. Now, this actually belongs to my good friend Brian. He's the front man for a local band here in the Tampa area called the Southern Creek Band. They play a lot of covers, southern rock and country, and that sort of thing. And uh, he's actually responsible for me starting to play my live solo gigs. Long story short, his wife and my wife, uh, they've been close friends ever since high school. Uh, so naturally we would go out to hear Brian's band play and I started to get a little jealous, not of Brian, but I'm like, I need to be on stage. How can I get back up on stage? I've been, you know, kind of like a, a small time solo artist, just, you know, writing songs, releasing them, spending most of my time in the studio here but I've got to get back on stage. So my wife mentioned I should just get up there with an acoustic and just do some solo acoustic gigs. And I'm thinking, okay, that'd be cool. Maybe do one or two of those a month. That would help me keep my stage presence and all that good stuff, you know, because if you're, if you're not on stage for a while, you will lose it if you don't use it. Of course, you can always gain it back just like anything else, but I just had this itch, you know. If you've played on stage or you play on stage, you know what I'm talking about. It's like you, you can't not do it, if that makes sense, okay? So anyway, I started playing these acoustic gigs and that just kind of blew up. And then, you know, after playing a few gigs, maybe for about six months, I started integrating the electric. And Brian let me borrow this guitar, and no, it's not on the borrow to own plan. <laughs> That'd be cool. I am considering buying this. He did say uh, he would consider selling it to me, so we're gonna talk more about that. But he let me borrow this guitar, and I've actually been bringing this to most of the gigs. You know, I, I play my Ibanez some here and there, or I did, but I've been taking this guitar to most of my live solo gigs and just throwing in a little electric here and there. I won't go over all the specs because there's a lot of modifications, and honestly, I'd have to have Brian here to tell me what all the modifications are. I do know these are uh, hand-wound pickups here, and we've got some really cool knobs there. Looks very like metal, and he's got these cool hooks for the strap. So anyway, but it's, it's a really beautiful sounding guitar, as you heard, and I'll have some more videos on this guitar as well. All right, guys, now real quick for the news I wanna share with you. So I am now an affiliate for Sweetwater Music. So I'm really humbled by this and really honored to uh, get to work with Sweetwater on this. Basically, in short, their marketing team reached out to me last week uh, saying they've been watching some of my YouTube videos and thought I'd be a really good fit to join their, uh, their affiliate team. So I'm very, just again, very grateful. And I want to say thank you to all of you who watch my videos, who like my videos. By the way, please give this a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. Turn on notifications, all that good stuff. Uh, but if it weren't for you, I would not have an opportunity like this. Uh, basically guys, how this works, I'll give you just a, a quick rundown and share the little caveat that you guys will appreciate here. A uh, quick rundown though, basically, if I put out a Sweetwater link, and I'm gonna tell you where these links are uh, for a specific product, you click on my link, it'll take you to Sweetwater. If you purchase, I get a small commission for that. Now, the caveat here, I'm not gonna be one of those people, uh, and I think they know this, you guys already know this, but I'm not gonna be throwing out links every day like, hey, buy this product so I can get commissions from Sweetwater. That's not how I operate. What I do have, what I'll share with you, is I have a gear page on my website. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. It's jasonstallworth.com slash gear. And what I do is I have all of the current gear that I use listed on that page. And I've got it kind of segregated. I've got everything I use for my live shows. I know some of you are getting into that, so I want to share more content uh, you know, around that. Also for my studio and also all the guitars and amps, which to be honest with you, like three-fourths of the stuff I have, with the exception of some of the pre-owned guitars I have and the Schroeder guitar, everything else has come from Sweetwater pretty much. But I have links to everything that I use and those links will all go to Sweetwater for that specific product or at least for that series of products. I know some of the guitars I own, like my Ibanez RG1570 for example, well, they don't make that model, but I do have that linking to the RG series on Sweetwater's site. So again, if you guys click on those links and decide to purchase something from Sweetwater, I do get a small commission. I appreciate that. And again, guys, I'm not just going to be throwing stuff out there. Everything that I use is on that web page there, and that's where all of the affiliate links for Sweetwater are. So, hey, if you'd like to, you know, check out my gear page and see what I use, and again, if you decide to purchase, that helps me. Of course, it helps Sweetwater. I know a lot of us order from them. They've got great customer service. Uh, real quick, Ben Porter. Ben, if you happen to watch this, 
thank you so much for all the help. Uh, ben has been my Sweetwater rep for years now, and he has really guided me through the process, especially of playing live. So I really appreciate his help, because uh, when I started playing live acoustic gigs, I was, I was a little lost, so he really guided me through that journey, so I, I'm real appreciative for that. And again, the links to everything that I use is on that webpage there, so definitely check that out. Links in the description. Guys, I want to thank you once again for watching my videos, and I really appreciate your support and everything that I do uh, from, from this, what we're talking about now, to my guitar courses, to my music, all that good stuff. Uh, also, I do have a free metal guitar practice guide if you guys don't have that, I know most of you do called Metal Riffs and Licks. There's a link for that in the description as well. A lot of links in the description, so be sure to uh, check that out. And guys, I will see you on the next video. Until then, keep it metal.